Good evening. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is May 14th, 2024. And we are going to open our meeting tonight with the presentation of the colors by the Kettering Police Department. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for the posting of colors. From the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uniform personnel, order, arms. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the honor guard tonight in honor of police week, which we are starting. Okay, please bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for your abundant blessing in surrounding us with stewardship and a supportive community in Kettering. We thank you for the ability to engage in useful work and for the honor of bearing these important responsibilities. We are grateful for your boundless love for all of us. Please continue to give us the strength and compassion with which to serve and grant us the wisdom to make appropriate decisions. Help us remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Guide this council so that we may work in harmony while serving our citizens with integrity and purpose. Allow us to fulfill the responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. I would like to introduce, recognize our Miami Valley Communications Council TV operator, Mike Saproni. Mike, thanks for your help tonight and every other night. Um, I'd like to welcome Jennifer Baker, who is our new clerk of council. Jennifer has been with us for a few weeks, two now, <laughs> two weeks, and she's doing a great job. And uh, you know, this is her first first meeting, and uh, she'll. She'll bring it home. Uh, Mrs. Fisher has an excused absence this evening, and uh, as well does our city manager. He's not here tonight either. So I'd like at this point to um, get the minutes from the last council meeting and workshop approved from April 23rd, as well as April 30th joint school board meeting minutes. Um, may I call on Mr. Sullivan for a motion to approve? Uh, Your Honor, I have read and reviewed the council meeting uh, and workshop minutes from April 23rd, 2024, and I have also read and reviewed the joint school board meeting minutes from April 30th, 2024. I find them in order and I move for approval. So moved. Okay. It's been, the motion's second. been moved and seconded. Sorry. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, please call the roll. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Abstain. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Perfect. 
Um, we have um, two proclamations tonight. The first one is for Bike Month, and I'd like to call on uh, Jill Hall to read that one. Yes. A uh, great proclamation here for the great work that the Bike uh, Club does in Kettering. And it reads <laughs> as, whereas the bike bicycle is economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of Kettering scenic beauty. And whereas biking is a lifeline for so many people during their daily lives, whether it's primary way people communicate or to, to essential jobs, the way people relieve stress and decompress after being home for long periods of time or the way children get much needed exercise when schools are closed, and whereas creating a bicycling friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health and well being, traffic safety, and wear and tear on roads, and whereas the city of Kettering's commitment to create a bicycle friendly community is evident in recent award designations, including the city receiving the bronze level bicycle friendly award from the League of American Bicyclists. And whereas the city will continue to foster relationships with local organizations, including Bike Miami Valley, Five Rivers Metro Park, the Dayton Cycle Club, and the League of American Bicyclists to enhance bike safety within the Kettering community. And whereas with the help of various groups and organizations, public awareness of bicycle safety will continue to grow and will improve the health and safety for everyone on the road, which will allow the Kettering community to continue to be a premier destination for cycling. Therefore, our Mayor Peggy Lehner, on behalf of City Council and the community, does hereby proclaim May 2024 to be Bike Month in the city of Kettering and encourage all citizens to recognize the importance of bicycle safety <coughs> and to be more aware of cyclists on our streets and roads. Thank you. I'm going to come down there and the first, uh, uh, Andy Ike is going to receive the bike proclamation right there. So we can get a picture of you if we have them. someone taking pictures tonight? Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to get you <laughs> Well, just wait. Well, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, I also have Eileen Maloney with me from um, Cycle Kettering, and she's going to say a few words after me. But uh, really appreciate the proclamation, and it is Bike Week now. It will be Bike to Work Day on Friday, so a group of us are going to ride down to the pancake flipping breakfast down at uh, Five Rivers Metro Parks. So that'll be fun first thing Friday morning. Hopefully, it doesn't rain. Um, we are a bicycle-friendly community until this year so we are in the process of redoing our application to either stay at bronze or hopefully go up to silver and be even more bike friendly uh, the, the way we do that is by doing the things that you all are reviewing and approving for the city including things like the we rerouted part of route 19 that goes through a regional route that goes through the city uh, to have a better crossing at marshall road there is a new um, widened sidewalk 10 foot wide sidewalk along county line road that completes part of our regional route nine and then we also have our new gentilly park that we'll see here shortly uh, being completed that has a nice bike route that comes into it as well from route 19. Um, if any of you saw there's some construction going on around the phrase and around lincoln park we are putting in bike racks around lincoln park we're also putting in a couple fix-it stations where you could actually put your bike up on a rack and do some adjustments on it. There will also be a bike pump out there. So when people do ride their bikes over to Lincoln Park, it'll be a great new amenity for them to be able to use that. Um, and then I'm also looking forward to the implementation of this strategic plan. There's a lot of stuff in there about bicycling and alternative transportation. And then working on the comprehensive plan, too, to look at more ways that we can improve the development in town to incorporate all, all sorts of different alternative transportation that we could use in Kettering and the citizens can benefit from. 
Um, Eileen has a couple things to say too. Thanks. Hello, I'm Eileen Maloney, a Kettering resident since 1991. I love to ride my bike. And I love to ride my bike in Kettering, through Kettering, around Kettering, and beyond. I'm here today to represent Cycle Kettering. We are a group of avid cyclists who love bikes and Kettering. In the last year, this group, Cycle Kettering, has hosted five community rides from the rec center. Uh, they are typically 10 miles and we go slowly along the posted bike routes, getting people more comfortable with how to get from here to there, whether it's to a park or to work or to wherever. Um, these rides are for anyone 18 and older. We um, go over safety rules, sign waivers of course, check bikes for safety, rideability, uh, and then venture out. We explore all the numbered, not all the numbered bike routes, several of the numbered bike routes and paths and shared roads, shared paths. We, um, during the cooler months, instead of riding, we host five meetings last year with all kinds of cycling topics, whether it's maintenance, uh, armchair presentations of big trips people have taken on their bikes, riding for charities, camping bike trips, and other features. We offer outreach and information, sharing four different community events. Uh, we gave away tons of cycling gadgets at the block party, the holiday at home, all those typical things. And most recently, April 27th, we sponsored our first Celebrate Trails national event um, with two regional routes that passed through Kettering. This activity included cleanup and new signage promoting cycle Kettering. Thank you for supporting all things fitness, especially bike and pedestrian infrastructure here in Kettering. Thank you. I mean, can uh, people who cheat like me with an electric bike? Yes, we even, wanted, we even had a presenter about e-bikes bring and show us different types and the different, uh, yes, you're welcome. And I almost made oh. off with your proclamation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now that I'm down here, um, I'm going to ask Brian Suddeth to uh, read the proclamation for Police Week, and then I will present it to the chief. Okay, Mayor, if I might, I want to make a quick comment about the bike thing. Uh, Andy, you mentioned the repair station. Uh, I was out a couple Saturdays ago with my grandson on the Iron Horse Trail, and that repair station came in invaluable to me. <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to have to push my bike home about two miles. So well done on those and, and strategically positioned as well. It's my honor to, to present the, the proclamation for uh, National Police Week and it reads as, whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated the week of May 12, 2024 through May 18, 2024 to be de dedicated as National Police Week, which pays tribute to all the men and women who have fallen in the line of duty. And whereas in 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15 as National Police Officers Memorial Day and Calendar Week in which May 15 falls as National Police Week. And whereas law enforcement or Peace Officers Memorial Day pays special recognition to those law enforcement officers who have been killed or disabled in the line of duty for the safety and protection of others. And whereas law enforcement officers serve with courage, dedication and strength. They fearlessly enforce laws at the risk of personal peril, safeguarding the property, liberty, lives of others. And whereas on Police Officers Memorial Day and throughout National Police Week, we express our unending gratitude to law enforcement officers who selflessly confront danger to protect our families and defend our communities. And whereas law enforcement officers of the city of Kettering unceasingly provide a vital public service. And whereas we owe law enforcement officers and their families our full and enduring support. Now therefore, Peggy Lander, Mayor of the City of Kettering, Ohio, on behalf of the City Council and the community, do proclaim May 12 to 18, 2024 to be Police Memorial Week here in the City of Kettering and urge all citizens to thank the men and women who work continuously to protect our community. Chief. Chief, it's my great pleasure to give you this proclamation on behalf of the City of Kettering Police Department. Thanks so much for all you do for our city. Thank you. <clears throat>
Well, I'm sure you've all heard me say time and time again how proud I am of members of the Kettering Police Department. I think that was on display tonight, but an impressive group of individuals. Uh, they are the posting of the colors, but also the past couple weeks of, of what they had to deal with and what they've had to see uh, and how rough the job can be. But this, this week is more about uh, what happened in Euclid uh, earlier this week where uh, Officer uh, Jacob Durbin lost his life when he was ambushed. And we pray for the family in, in that department. Uh, what they do is a dangerous job. Uh, what we expect and ask from them is very difficult. And I'm very grateful for what they do. So as I've said before, uh, this city is very lucky to have the men and women who we have at the Kettering Police Department protecting them. Uh, but the men and women who work for the Kettering Police Department are also lucky to work for a city uh, that supports them like you do. So thank you for this. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much. And you know, thanks, gentlemen, for the other part. Mayor, if I may ask. Last week I was able to attend the promotion ceremony and the swearing in of six new officers. And I, I spoke to some of the leadership of, of our department then, but I was struck by the number of uh, young spouses and children in attendance and it was a reminder of what is waiting at home for our officers off duty and also th just the level of education training and experience the new officers bring to our community and that they chose Kettering for their career and that just says a lot about the department and also this, the support of the staff and the community at large that those people would choose their career to come here and left reputable departments both here in the region nationwide to come to our city so Thank you for that, and uh, just a wonderful experience to see this swearing in and the promotions just last week. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. There are no public hearings this evening. Uh, this is the point in the agenda when anyone wishes to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes speaker must state their name and address and comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to address council at this point? Okay. Seeing none, we will now move on to ordinances and second reading, of which there are none. So we will move to resolutions and I'll call on Mr. Sullivan to introduce legislation. Your Honor, I have a resolution adopting renewed and recalculated street light assessments, amended and or consolidated street lighting districts and certifying them to the county auditor for collection. Uh, this is requested by the engineering department and I move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Bergstresser. You have uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is the last step in our annual uh, street lighting assessment uh, process. Uh, so by passage of this resolution, uh, we will send, uh, upon proper notification processes, we will send the assessments uh, down to the county auditor uh, for collection. Be happy to answer any questions. Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a donation for the purchase of fitness equipment. This is uh, being requested by Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department, and um, the estimated amount is $1,000. I move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Brickstresser. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, very simply, uh, Alice uh, Rodersheimer uh, would like to provide a $1,000 donation to the city of Kettering to support the purchase of fitness equipment at the Kettering Recreation Complex. Be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to contract for entertainment booking and related services for the 2025 phrase pavilion season. Estimated cost is $125,000. That is the amount budgeted and is requested by Parks and Recreation. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Bergstress. 
Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it sounds a little silly to be talking about the 2025 freeze season when we haven't even started the 2024 freeze season. Um, however, with uh, the way uh, acts are booked uh, for the phrase pavilion, um, we actually start that process uh, in the coming weeks, uh, ironically. Um, so this resolution tonight will approve the contract uh, that we have with Variety Attractions, which we've been using them uh, for a number of years now to contract um, for the and book the season uh, for the phrase pavilion. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. I have a resolution authorizing, <clears throat> excuse me, the city manager to enter, enter into and implement a collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police, Kettering Lodge number 92 which is consistent with a tentative agreement reached by the bargaining teams. This is being requested by the Human Resources Department, and I move for approval. Second. Okay, I think um, Jenny Smith is going to speak on this one. Thank you, Your Honor. The terms of this tentative agreement include a wage pattern of 3.5% in year one of the contract, 3% in years two and years three of the contract. This also includes um, city's flexibility to fund HSAs at no less than 50%, and to increase deductibles to $3,000 and $6,000. Um, lastly, we, we have, have made universal changes to pronouns throughout the contract, and it is a three-year duration. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, please call the roll. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. <clears throat> Um, I'd just like to comment um, that this is the season that we are doing all the contract collective bargaining agreements, and Jenny has been working her tail off, and thank you very much for all the hard work you've done for the city. Thank you. Okay, next resolution. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for reimbursement from the state disaster relief program for personal expenses incurred during the total solar eclipse on <coughs> April 8, 2024. This is requested by the fire department, and I do move for approval. Second. Okay, anyone have any questions or comments? Okay. It, it went very well, as I understand. Okay. Um, Mr. Burke's dresser, you have comments. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Kettering was in the area of full, full totality, as we know, uh, for the solar eclipse back on April 8th. Uh, and therefore, we increased uh, staffing levels uh, in several departments, including fire, police, and dispatch, in order to be prepared for any emergency that might arise uh, through that, the duration of the event. Uh, we are requesting uh, reimbursement in the amount of uh, $10,721.70 uh, for related uh, expenses incurred uh, during this day and time. Be happy to answer questions. Okay. We have done. All right. Go ahead, call the roll. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a firefighter exposure to environmental elements grant from the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation. <clears throat> the estimated cost is $13,472.50, and the amount budgeted is $0. This is requested by the fire department. Fire Department, I move for approval. Second. Mr. Bergstresser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation uh, has awarded the City of Kettering Fire Department with the Firefighter Exposure to Environmental Elements Grant. Uh, the total award for this uh, grant is $11,547.50, uh, which includes uh, and also includes the City of Kettering's matching funds of $1,925. Uh, the fire department intends to use the funds to purchase structural firefighting gloves and or Nomex blend particulate hoods. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, call the roll. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering State of Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. I move for approval. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Mr. Burks. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, both of the items on the supplemental appropriation for this evening are in relation to previous resolutions that were approved. Uh, the first one is $1,000 um, being requested by the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department uh, for the donation from Alice Rodesheimer uh, for the purchase of fitness equipment at the Kettering Recreation Center. And then the second one is the uh, a supplement appropriation of the $13,472.50 um, for uh, the grant that we received uh, from the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation for the Fire Department and also uh, a transfer from the general fund uh, for the required city match uh, for that program. Be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? I would like to just publicly thank Alice Rodersheimer for her um, contribution to Parks and Rec. Um, it was very generous of her. Appreciate it. And call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Suddeth? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay, that concludes our ordinances, our resolutions rather. Uh, we have no ordinances in first reading this evening. Um, do we have any certifications and petitions? I will call on Jennifer Baker. Your Honor, we do not have any certifications or per petitions this evening. Okay, thank you very much. We'll turn now to the manager's report and the community update, and Mr. Bergstrasher will be giving that tonight. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the month of May was chosen uh, to celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander uh, heritage because of two significant dates. Uh, the first being May 7th, 1843, when the first Japanese immigrants arrived in the U.S., and also May 10th, 1869, when the Transcontinental Continental Railroad, uh, which was largely built by Chinese immigrant labor, was completed. The Kettering's uh, Board of Community Relations encourages you, encourages you to learn more about Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage this month and at any time because Kettering truly is home to all of us. Um, we mentioned this earlier in the meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just, but just to uh, reiterate the importance of this week, um, National Police Week is this week. Um, in uh, 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls uh, as National Police Week. And so this was established by a joint resolution of Congress in 1962. This week pays special recognition to those law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty for the safety and protection of others. Um, on Wednesday, uh, Kettering Police Department held their annual police memorial uh, to honor the men and women who serve their predecessors and the families who support their vocation. Uh, we truly are grateful every day for the protection they uh, provide and we hope you feel our heartfelt thanks uh, tenfold during this week of honor and appreciation. Every year the International Code Council dedicates the month of May as Building Safety Month uh, as an opportunity for groups like our Planning and Development Department to educate others about what we do. Uh, please follow us on social media for more information, or you can contact uh, Patrick Hillier, our chief building official, at 937-296-2400 for more information. Project that is um, affecting my family's commute to and from our preschool. Uh, on Mad River Road, uh, there is a milling and paving operation uh, going on, so this month, uh, the Montgomery County Engineer's Office uh, is uh, resurfacing Mad River Road uh, from the Kettering corporate limits um, all the way south uh, to the Dayton Mall through Washington Township and Miami Township. Uh, the road is open to traffic, uh, though I can tell you personally firsthand that travel time is impacted, so you may want to find an uh, alternate route uh, to get to the Dayton Mall uh, during the month of May. And then for our own project, uh, we have a road closure coming up um, here in the uh, coming month. Uh, starting on or around June 3rd, um, eastbound uh, David Road um, from uh, basically Ackerman to Far Hills uh, will be closed uh, due to a construction project that we have funded uh, in this year's capital improvement program. Uh, we're making s significant improvements uh, to this section of David Road, uh, including um, curb, sidewalk, drive approach repairs. Uh, we are uh, slightly widening um, a section of David Road uh, where it narrows down to two lanes, um, adding some new sidewalk in that area. 
and then also making uh, major improvements uh, to the uh, pavement uh, in that area, especially in front of uh, the WING radio station. So uh, traffic will be maintained uh, eastbound, uh, but westbound uh, will be closed uh, during this time. Mr. Burke, sister, can I just ask you, will that be taking out that curve that, curve that comes out in the middle of the road? Um, just to the west of the of WING, uh, yes, sort of. Um, so it'll be slightly wide in that area, but we'll also have a new sidewalk in that area for pedestrians. And then is that it's uh, that uh, time of year every year for our uh, annual neighborhood pride program uh, this program is designed to honor residents who have made significant improvements to their homes or who have maintained their properties impeccably uh, year after year uh, so we ask that you please take a moment to nominate a neighbor a business yourself or any Kettering resident you think is deserving of this award uh, nominations are accepted online by visiting our website or by emailing our volunteer administrator Don Kirchner um, and for your convenience, we've also uh, included a submission form uh, in the summer edition of Contact with Kettering. And I know that there are prepaid postage um, postcards uh, that are uh, scattered around town at uh, shops and libraries and the sort. Uh, so look for those and please nominate uh, your neighbors for this uh, very prestigious award. The deadline for nominations is August 1st. Uh, we also spoke about bike month earlier in the meeting. Um, it's a great month uh, for those uh, who currently bike, uh, ride their bike and those who are interested in riding their bike. So we, include, we encourage those uh, individuals interested in biking or wanting to learn more uh, to uh, use this month to uh, take advantage of everything that's being celebrated. Um, May 13th to the 19th is Bike to Work Week. And uh, as Andy mentioned earlier, a number of city employees are planning to participate in Bike to Work Day down at Riverscape. Um, so please <clears throat> make plans to attend that, as well as the Cycle Kettering Community Ride on May 26th. <clears throat> and then uh, in observance of Memorial Day, uh, the Kettering Administrative Offices will be closed on that day, May 27th. And uh, we are also planning um, a Memorial Day ceremony that will take place at Beavertown Cemetery on Valleywood Drive. Uh, that Monday morning at 10 a.m., uh, the American Legion Post 598 will honor the fallen and the community is welcome to come and pay homage to those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Uh, it's a very short uh, and very solemn uh, ceremony. Uh, we'll begin promptly at 10 a.m. and uh, we ask, or invite all to attend. And finally, Your Honor, since I'm losing my voice tonight, mm -hmm. uh, please join us for another uh, Kettering uh, block party uh, this uh, coming May 29th uh, at the Civic Commons uh, in front of the Frey's Pavilion from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, this is a great annual event to learn more about the City of Kettering Departments, uh, enjoy some free entertainment, and we plan to have Dilly Bars again this year for distribution. So please come and enjoy. That's all we have tonight, Your Honor. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Don't miss your dilly bar. I just want you to know I still get complaints about the year the dilly bars were melted. Yeah, so yeah. we forgot we could... about it. <laughs> the freezer does work. We can okay, it. great. <laughs> okay. Um, at this point, if you would like to come speak before City Council, please come on down to the podium, and each speaker will have a five minute limit. Speakers are asked to state their name and address. Is there anyone who would like to speak? We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Um, we'll let you go ahead and, um, like I said, give your name and address and um, tell us what you want to hear. Thanks, Mayor, Council. I'm Mary Beth Melville. I live at 419 Springside Drive on East Kettering. And I'm here to talk about something that's become an interest to me and I hope will become an interest to you. Um, I've lived in Kettering almost all my life. College and military service took us away for a while, but basically I've been here and of course I remember and appreciate the days of the Kettering Oakwood Times. It's long gone and I have missed it and others have missed it and the connection that it brought among our community, especially between the community and the schools and communities and neighborhoods. But I recently discovered 
something called the Centerville Dispatch. I didn't know it existed. So I picked it up at the Centerville Panera and called Miami Valley Publishing, Miami Valley Newspapers, listed as the publisher, and discovered that they also publish the Miamisburg West Carrollton News, the Germantown Press, the Franklin Chronicle, the Springboro Star Press, and the Centerville Dispatch. I had no idea any of these existed. Don Miller is the owner of Miami Valley Newspapers, and when I called to talk to him about his business, he was most interested and pleased that I had called and was glad to have somebody from Kettering interested in becoming involved. Um, I've also learned that Beaver Creek has a newspaper, a new Beaver Creek News Current. We know the Oakwood Register. We know the Gazzini Gazzini We don't have a newspaper. So, I'm bringing to you the idea of pursuing Don's offer to become interested in publishing a newspaper for us. His first thought was to combine us with Centerville and not create a whole new edition. We have a lot of things in common with Centerville. We eat in the same places and shop in the same places, but we do have a little school issue that could be important. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm here just to tell you what I know about this and to see if you're interested in having him come or in some way pursue this idea that we could once again have our own newspaper. He has sent multiple copies of all of his editions for you to take a look at and see what they're all about and ask me just to report back to you what thoughts are, what interest might be, what you would like to happen next, if you would like for him to come or just have me relay information. But it's an open, open book at, at this point because I can see on your faces that this is new information to yeah. you too. And perhaps there is a way that we could learn more about it. Are there any questions at yeah. this time, or would you like me just to? Mary Beth, how long has he been doing that? Since the time the Kettering, Oakwood Times, and the Centerville Times what? left. Really? He jumped on it right away. Hmm. And why he's gotten linked up with the other communities, but never us, is... Does he charge a subscription fee, or...? Only if you want it mailed. Okay. It is free to pick up, like the Oakwood Register. He publishes 1,500 editions of the Centerville edition, and last week he said he picked up only one. There was a copy that was left over. What? So people are taking them. Are I those did a one-person <laughs> survey when I asked my chiropractor in Centerville <laughs> if he picks it up huh. and he said uh, when something on the front page catches his eye yes he does the price is right and he has enjoyed reading it when he when he does pick it up but he is that a month is that a monthly weekly it's comes weekly. out weekly on Wednesdays it's delivered to all the usual places like Dorothy Lane markets and Manera mm -hmm. bread and all well, places around town that you would expect to find it, like find the Oakwood Register. Any other questions down there? I just got a, a quick comment. We spoke on the phone yes. the other week, and you, you could have been on that. Um, I remember the KO Times back in the day because I delivered oh, yeah. it as a boy. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> You're the one. <laughs> yeah, the one. <laughs> um, I think it's an interesting concept. I think we should discuss it, especially because it's a no charge deal. I, I was going to assume for a moment we would gather some interest with business owners and other people in the community. Yeah. I he think is pursuing the business part of it right now about uh, such things as contacting his printer 
to see how that will affect his costs and how okay. his advertisers will respond. But he will get back with us. Okay. I think the next step probably should be for him to come in and sit down with the city manager and um, our communications director. And um, I'd okay. love to join in that meeting. If anyone else would like to be there, more than welcome. But I think that would be appropriate uh, next step. And thanks okay. for bringing that to I can't believe that none of us have ever seen it. No, I just uh, lamented many times and uh, never knew there was something I could do about it. Oh, well, thank you so much. And you have been a lifelong uh, Kettering resident. Yes, Did you move off Rock Hill? Weren't you on we, Rock Hill? We lived on Rock Hill for 30 years that's and then moved from our tri level to a single story home out in the Walden area. Okay. Well, we're glad you stayed in Kettering. Thanks. Okay. Retired teacher. Yeah. Fairmont graduate. So and involved in everything. Yeah. I you can't go to an event without that. seeing the Melville. Should I give these to you? Um, yeah. Pass with me over there and she'll. And uh, that's our communications director. So she'll be looking into it. Thank and you so much. Uh, was there anyone else that wished to uh, come down? I don't think there's anyone left to come down. So we'll turn to you, Mr. Sullivan. You get to go first. All righty. Um, so I just wanted to talk about <clears throat> we approved the minutes from the April 30th uh, joint meeting with the school board. And I just think that's such a neat tradition um, that our twice a year our school board and our city council get together give each other updates, and I think just keeping that line of communication open is such a great thing. Not every city does the, not in every city does the school and the city get along so well, so um, I think we're lucky to have that here in Kettering. That was a great meeting. <clears throat> Excuse me, and while talking about the schools, I also wanna bring up, uh, we lost Scott Inskeep last week, kind of unexpectedly. Uh, he was only 62, and he was our previous superintendent. Um, uh, the year I got hired in Kettering City Schools was the year he started, so he was uh, the only superintendent I knew for a while until Mindy was here. Uh, he was a great guy, um, and so it was pretty shocking. Everybody at the school Monday and Tuesday, it was, it was sad and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, very unexpected. So if anyone wants to pay respects tomorrow at Trent Arena, I believe it starts at 3.30. Um, is it 3.30? Yeah it'll be open to the public. So I just wanted to put that out there in case anybody knew Scott or wanted to go uh, pay your respects. That's it for me. Thank you. Nothing for the good of the order tonight for me. Uh, I've just got a couple of things. Uh, I could not attend the last council meeting. So I just, I just want to make mention uh, for our previous clerk of council and commend Shauna Kaczynski she was always so professional and helpful to me. She will be missed, and I, I wish her well in her, in her uh, next career. Uh, last Wednesday, uh, May 8th, I had the privilege to once again uh, attend our police memorial service. Um, I, I can't say how moving it is. That's such a dignified, yet at the same time sobering event. Uh, as the chief mentioned, you know, these people put their life on the line every day for us, and we should never take them for granted. And you know we're lucky to have those people to protect us. Thank you. Um, the year I was secretary of the PTA over at Greenmont, um, that was the year Dr. Inskeep was hired. And he came to all the PTA meetings, even before school started, to introduce himself. And um, he turned to shake my hand and I, I was introduced and I said, well, I prefer Madam Secretary, just joking around. Mm -hmm. So years later when I was in KLA, um, I saw him again for the first time. I didn't see him a lot. And it was a school board meeting that we were required to attend. And afterwards I was kind of standing right next to him. And you know, I said, hey, I don't know if you remember me. And he looked at me and he said, Madam Secretary. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so he was wonderful. And he was such a great leader in the community. and just our thoughts are with his family. He was wonderful. And I will be there tomorrow to pay respects. A um, couple of good things 
in the community in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Leadership Academy for this year graduated. We had our graduation ceremony and it was fantastic. Um, the graduates had a couple of great projects, one which will bring um, make books more available to kids at Greenmont over the summer and another that will provide um, sort of emergency clothing, a clothes closet at, I think it was Beavertown. I think it's Beavertown. Um, wonderful projects, I'm so proud of our class. Um, and thank you so much to uh, Minnie McCarty Stewart, who was our keynote speaker, she did a great job. And I wanna remind everyone, applications are out there um, for the next year's class, and I wanna um, encourage all the head people in this room, chiefs, <laughs> get your people to apply. Um, we would like to have them for KLA. And um, one last thing, the youth and government program was yesterday, and it brought kids from Fairmont over here, and they toured, they toured the courts, they did a whole thing, and they had a mock council meeting, and it was the best thing I've ever seen. Those kids were fabulous, and it was hilarious, <laughs> but they were so well prepared, and the student mayor held it together perfectly. I, <laughs> I wouldn't have made it through that meeting. So anyway, thank you to uh, Mr. Byers, who uh, organized, or who was a teacher for the AP government class, and thank you to Jennifer Baker, who she did so many of the de so much of the detailed work to make this happen, and I'm so appreciative you did that. Thank you. It was a wonderful day, and that's all I have. Uh, just to echo, uh, Lisa, uh, I attended the KLA graduation. I was part of the second Kettering Leadership Academy class in 0405, and uh, this time I got to sit with uh, my predecessor, Bruce Duke. And Shane was at the table, and uh, if you know Bruce, he just looks for an audience, and he had six of us. And so it was a, <laughs> it was uh, it was an awesome, it was an awesome history lesson, and we swapped stories uh, about uh, the leaders of this community before our time. So it was just a pleasure to watch the next generation of leaders complete their academy uh, cohort over those nine months, and then at the same time in the back of the room to share stories uh, about Chet Roush and Jim Trent and uh, former mayors, uh, Chuck Horn, and we just, we just shared stories about our times that we get to spend with those leaders and, and Bruce's just experience uh, of all those years in the city. And it was just a fantastic night to celebrate these new 11 uh, KLA graduates, uh, of which our city manager was a part of that class. It was a very nice. Um, the thing I got to do last week was celebrate a small business in town, select signs out on um, uh, Spalding Road celebrated 20 years and they moved to the city about five years ago and their business has continued to grow and uh, it's just really neat to, to be a part of that celebration and see uh, small businesses thriving in our community and uh, just a real privilege to be with them and the, the KMO chamber uh, for that celebration last week. And as the representative to the Board of Community Relations, uh, I would just remind you that we're a month away from the Juneteenth celebration. Uh, we're in our just a few few years of that here in town, but if you mark your calendars for June 18th at, at Rosewood, there are a few uh, events on that on that Tuesday, and then we'll celebrate Juneteenth at uh, Lincoln uh, Lincoln Park and the Phrase uh, Commons on the 19th of June. So uh, the BCR, the Board of Community Relations, would would be happy to uh, for folks to know that and to share those details. It's a community event to celebrate that occasion. So mark your calendars for Juneteenth, and the details are on the website. Okay. We're done. Okay, up, up to me. Okay. Um, I have mostly a Me Too report left here. Um, congratulations to the Leadership Academy. Um, they are, you know, when you look at the number of people who are in leadership positions in the city now that went through the Leadership Academy, it really is, um, tells you a lot about the value of it. So if you've ever thought about going, Nobody um, is excluded. I mean, you heard our city manager just spent the year going through the program. So um, seriously, it's a great time, way to learn the city and to learn how to be a leader in our, in our community. So I really encourage that. Um, I certainly want to add my condolences to the Innskeep families. I met Scott when he first arrived here. One of the first things he did was, I was a state rep at that point, and he called me to his office, and we had a great chat, and I just remember thinking, this community's in great hands with, with Scott, and he will, he will indeed be missed. Um, the police memorial, as always, is one of those events that's just not to be missed, and 
and um, we just can't begin to say thank you often enough. Um, so glad to see Youth in Government Day back. We did it up and for years, up until COVID, and like so many other things, it sort of fell by the wayside. But we are back, and there was this most obnoxious citizen in the community who kept getting up and harassing these kids. And he's sitting over there right now in this assistant city manager's role. But uh, no, he is great. Uh, you know, you have fun at those things. It's if you do them all nice and stale, kind of like council meetings can be at times, um, but just some of the time. But um, they had a lot of fun. and. Uh, they voted unanimously to have a dog park, and uh, there's still some opposition <laughs> around here, but we continue to keep it alive. And I um, can't remember, oh, the other thing they're going to do is build bunkers. <laughs> that was sort of the, there's always a silly one, that was the doomsday bunkers, and you have to get a permit for it. And I'm sure chief of police would love to pulling people out of bunkers. But. Anyway, um, and with that, I have no further business. I would like to just commend Jennifer, though, on an absolutely perfect meeting. It took me a year to have one that was okay. <laughs> so you're great. Thank you and welcome once again. Um, with that, um, we will now adjourn, and our next meeting date is the 28th, I believe. Okay, we are adjourned. <laughs>